Hey guys, so as I continue on, I want to talk with you guys. The Lord has had me talking about relationships and things of that nature. So whether you're dating or married or you are single, this stuff can still be helpful. And even if you're married, I think this stuff can still be helpful. And I believe that it can also be applied to other relationships that are not necessarily intimate or partnership partnerships but people in general sometimes you're around and have been around a person who has a certain pattern of behavior and you were with them and you try to understand them you try to be sympathetic and empathetic and you have been tolerant of a lot of things that they've been doing and you forgave them and you believe their words and they continue doing certain things and finally when everything comes out they're blaming you and they're telling you all these things by the time you're out of that relationship you are have you're so much shell shock and you have so much strat uh, shrapnel in you from the blast and the things that they've said and they've done the offenses in the relationships the betrayal the deception the manipulation the mind game you have so many uh internal and in, internal injuries and and mental injuries and some of you have physical injuries and emotional injuries you have so many you're so bullet ridden from all the hurt and the pain and the things that they have done spiritually you're tattered and in rags that this person has the ability to want when you're down and right before they leave or break off the relationship or something that they say to you that keeps you subservient to them or under their feet is to blame you and to make you think that you have done something wrong to cause their behavior. They will make you feel as if it was you that caused this they will make you feel as if it was you that stirred them to behave in the way that they did it was something that you did or they will capitalize on the moments when you lashed out now you may have always been calm in the relationship understanding but after being in a relationship where there's so much pain and deception and betrayal and hurt you lash out and you say something to them or you just express yourself verbally, or you behave unseemly because that can happen in pain. Pain can make people act ugly. So now that you've responded in a way that was not good, they will capitalize on that and say, that's why I'm, I'm this way and I, I, I can't move forward with you or whatever the case may be. And so they may drop a little bomb on you, give you that last blow while you're down and out and when they're packing and leaving and when they've moved on or, or they're still with you and still in your life, but they're holding their position as you're the problem as they continue to perpetuate in their bad behavior. I'm not wrong. Everybody else is wrong. When they do that, sometimes you can be amazed and you can wonder, wow, what? What is this? Who is this person? Who is this charming person? What happened to the charming person I met in the beginning, the sweet, kind person, considerate individual? And then there's some of you who've never had that. Could be a loved one, could be somebody, could be a sibling, could be a friend that, you know, someone that's supposed to be a good friend that you've known. They've had a pattern of behavior throughout your friendship and throughout your growing up that you have gotten used to, you've been groomed and conditioned to that sort of behavior. They may be, you have a friend that's a sore loser. They don't like when things are winning. They'll be the friend that would get mad and leave in the middle of a game. They're that friend that if you're winning and you're like, ah, or, or whatever, you can't be happy. So they condition you that when you're playing a card game with them or a board game or anything you have learned to to um what's the word i'm looking for suppress your happiness and winning you know that you can't have any playful banter with them over the game you know that's going to upset them so what you do is you adjust your happiness and keep it in 
you know that you may be with it could be a sibling they have a certain way that they behave so you know that in order not to upset them or trigger them you know I have to keep quiet about this or don't say this. You may have a family member, a parent that's a certain way. You know that they're going to have to always be right. If you have a different opinion, that's going to be a problem. That could mean, hey, they don't want to help you anymore. You may be in business with them. So you know they're going to get a certain way and you just don't want that discomfort. So you learn to adjust to that person. And so they can make you believe either by verbally saying it or making you feel it, there are those nonverbal cues that you can get from them as well, that it's you. And you, because you love them and you're so open to them and you just believe them, they've groomed you, you've grown around them, you learn to adjust yourself and believe certain narratives that they tell you. And that is manipulation. So what am I here to tell you today? Whether it's a loved one, meaning mother, father, sibling, relatives, whether it's someone that's close to you, best friend, someone you've grown up with, could be a cousin that's also relatives, could be these individuals. You have to, and it could be someone from the church, could be your husband, wife, someone you're dating, someone you were married to and, and presently or presently with, someone that you dated before and it broke off and ended or someone you're presently with. What you have to understand about these individuals is this, they're number one, that blame shifting, do not internalize that and do not make it your own. You have a right to feel the way that you feel. There's no way that I can poke a hole in a paper, a piece of paper and expect it to say the same. If I have a clean sheet of paper, which would represent your trust and your loyalty and your faithfulness to this person, the honor that you have for the parent, the love that you have for a sibling. And I come up and I put, and I put a little, get a pencil and I, or get a black mark and I put a dot in it. That surface has been compromised. And so I could apologize to you and say, I didn't mean to do that. And now I put another dot on it. And I could apologize and say, I'm sorry, I didn't know. And then I put another dot and another dot and another dot and another dot. And then I get more bold and I start just hitting the surface and I start making swirlies and circles. And then after a while, I just start poking holes in the paper. And after that, I may want to rip a couple sides off. And, and after that, I may want to ball it up. And then after that, I want to op I open it back up and it's all wrinkled. And then I'm going to complain now. Why is this paper wrinkled and messed up? That's what they do. So now it's the paper's fault for looking the way it's done. I, you, I didn't do any of that. You did that to yourself. Why are you balled up and wrinkled with all these holes in you? Now they start complaining about what you look like. They start to complain when you're now beginning to cry out and you're starting to get erratic and you're starting to cry more and you're upset. Now they're upset that you're, you don't trust them. They're upset. You're balled up and wrinkled now. Your trust and all that has been dashed. That's your hope in them. Your balled up paper that I described with all the holes and the marks and the ripped up edges, that's you. And they're standing going, I don't know why you're this way. Why you, why you check my phone? Why you do this? Why you questioning everybody I talk to? I know I cheat on you like about a, uh, uh, several times this year, but ah, this is unacceptable. Oh, they will have a high standard. <laughs> but something that I learned, especially to those of you that are married, there is no secret, secrecy in truth. There is no secrecy in truth. God may lead you and show you what's there to save your life so you can know the truth. But guess what? Even when the truth is there, they will still talk you out of it. I always say you're going to have a Genesis 3 experience with these individuals. And what happened in Genesis 3? In Genesis chapter 3, that's where the serpent was able to talk Eve out of what God had told her. And so when God reveals things to you and he shows you the truth, this person is going to be able to talk you out of it, blame you for it, shift it and tell you you never saw it. 
you get to a point you have to screenshot things you have to record it because they will tell you i never said that and sometimes even when you play it they'll say that wasn't me <laughs> these individuals are like oh my gosh so here's something i want to tell you before i end this message you have to realize that you are not their first rodeo in terms of a parent who behaves like this they have been doing this before you were born believe me it's not a new thing that behavior that they have to to just be how they are that is a behavior that they picked up at some point in their life where they, they maybe they experienced rejection trauma maybe they were just doted on spoiled all their lives something may have happened something happened in their lives and so they learn the hurt and the pain within them became something and they have been doing this for a long time that means they were they started probably learning to be this way from they were like teenagers a young adult your parents would have had or parent would have had a head start well before you were born we're talking about probably at least 10 at least a decade plus before you and then all the years that they have lived you tap that on that they have that same behavior we're talking about decades on top of decades on top of decades depending on how old they are the very least a decade they have on you to behave this way and so therefore that's why you are no match for them number one the of them being a parent they are already at a different advent a better advantage because they're parents and that's a position that's given to them by god but they can use that position to destroy their children but nevertheless that's still a god-given position now they'll stand before god to give an account for what they've done and nevertheless, you still have to respect them and honor them as a parent. But honoring the parent does not mean you allow them to abuse you. You can be separated from them. You could separate yourself from them and still honor them. Honor them for what for the position that they have so you don't disrespect them. You don't curse them out. You don't retaliate. You don't go and spread their name and tell people all their business, whatever, whatever. Um, or do vindictive things to them. You don't want to do that because they're going to stand before God. Now, there may be certain things that the parent may have done to you that you may have to talk about it, especially with sexual abuse and things. There are people that that has to be exposed. That, that has nothing to do with, oh, let me honor my dad and not say anything or and I'm honor my mom and not say anything. Sometimes you have to talk about those things as God leads you. So that's not what I mean. But just to berate your parents and say whatever about them, you probably want to refrain from that. Okay. You honor them. You can honor them as what, as the being the vessel, the person that gave birth to you, but it does not mean that you yield or submit yourself to that evil spirit, that demonic entity that operates in them, because that's what it is. Something would have happened to your parent at some point in their lives, and they allowed that thing to go down in their heart. Somewhere they rejected God somewhere along the way to behave a different way. They reject God by choosing to lie or practicing to lie than tell the truth. Believe me, your parent would have heard about God at some point or some, they heard of the Lord. And if they don't at that point, some, at some point they, at they, that at some point they will. Nevertheless, there are, uh, there is a moral compass by which most people operate in society, whether they know God or not. They would have chosen to go against that and do something different. So their heart begins to change. That is why your parent can treat you as if you're a stranger. That's why they can do certain things that is like completely opposite of what a parent should do. They can plot against you, plot against you as a child, not trust you, do these things, do wicked things because of their own choices. They continue to get more and more wicked and evil because there is a dark entity, an evil, wicked spirit by which they have allowed in their lives. They're not possessed by it. 
Because spirits can't come in and do anything unless you are willing to. People, if you don't believe, the thing about society today is nobody want to believe in the supernatural. Yet, there's so many TV shows that talks about the supernatural. People don't want to believe that the in the unseen world. But it's very obvious. Look at the things that people are doing. So there are certain things, hurt, pain, trauma, rejection, or entitlement, certain things change your parent heart and they were doing that way before you. So when they're behaving that way, understand that they, and they continue to be that way, that's their choice. People, people outside of your parents, friends, uh, a spouse, same thing, guys. They have been doing what they've been doing before they met you. There's something in them that they have not reconciled with God and they continue and they find perhaps power and they enjoy being able to manipulate and get away and they become very well versed. They may have been uncomfortable telling that first lie or doing that first dishonest thing, but with practice, they became perfect. This person that you're dating now, the things that they're doing, they have done it to someone else. And they will do it to someone after you if they don't get their lives changed and get before God and deal with those heart issues. But pride is one of the main things. They, the thing about it that people will sin so much that the very sins that they practice will harden their own, own heart and turn around and consume them. Nobody ever gets away with anything. You know, the Bible tells us in Revelation 3, he says, you're neither hot nor cold. You say, the, they're talking about the church, and, and the church are individuals. It's us. But this scripture can also be this. This is a mindset of some people. They're neither hot nor cold. It means that you can't, they're not one way or another. They, they don't, they, they don't, how do I put this? They're back and forth, double-minded they do a lot of different things and they feel like they have need of nothing. You know, they may say, cause we're rich. They may be, they may be actually wealthy doing well, but it's say I have need of nothing. And so that could mean, you know, where I am, I'm fine. I have no need of recon a consideration of you. I have no need to think of you. I have no need to apologize. I have no need to consider my actions and my behavior. And they don't know that they're wretched poor, blind, miserable, and naked. And they don't know that. They don't realize that because they have put themselves in a position of it's you, not me. And so what you have to understand is when they are telling you certain things and they have declared you to be uh crazy, deranged, demented, unfit, ugly, worthless, dumb, stupid, ugly. It's your fault. You're nothing. You're nobody. I'm better than you. I brought you in this world and I can take you out. Whatever they say to you, take that, not even with a grain of salt. Don't. You have to know that you are not their first victim. They got bodies on them. They have done this before because this is their pattern of behavior. This person that you married had been doing this stuff way before you met him or her. And they were practicing that behavior for a long time. And you will find that they're always going to pick somebody that is completely opposite of them. They're not going to pick a person to date or to marry that's, as, that's a jerk like them. And sometimes if the, there are many of you, maybe the parent will treat everybody the same way, but sometimes you will feel, see that they will, uh, the parent may treat you a certain way, but will embrace a child that's rude, rebellious, and inconsiderate. As you all get older, that child is rude, disrespectful to them, and treats them poorly, but they will go and go, go uh, through hell and high water. They'll walk through fire for that child. They will do anything for that child, and you, the one that's that's considerate and kind or oh, they'll treat you like garbage why because that child that behaves that way they have like spirits they're they're alike they're just as rude inconsiderate 
nasty as they are. They're like kindred spirit, if you want to call it that. So they're going to uphold that child because they are, it's familiar spirits coming together. This parent realizes this child going to curse them out or whatever. If you dare to do that, it will be the end of the world for you. And sometimes the reason why parents will cheat, treat one child better than the other is to pit the children against each other. So there's no unity there. And to make that child make one child feel alienated versus another. Which we shouldn't. Take comfort in knowing and understanding that that's, that behavior was in place with them before they met you. They just had to adjust themselves. What they did, they saw the type of person that you were and they hid that stuff. And then they came and they got used to you. And then slowly but surely, they started to push the envelope. If you think of the first thing that they did, if you can remember it, because there's so many. But if you think of the first time you saw something and then they explained it away and then you were going to walk away and then they stayed with you and they continued. I'm talking about relationships now. And now to who they have exasper... Exas... <laughs> What's the word? They have exasperated to become or exacerbated correction. And now they don't care. The very things that used to deny and say they didn't do. They're saying, so what? That's right. Oh, well. Why? Because you've shown them over time, they slowly chipped away at your self-worth, your, your confidence, they ensured that you had fallen in love with them, hook, line, and sinker. They tested the water. They conditioned you to certain things. They conditioned you to the cycle of, please forgive me, I'm sorry, where they would hurt you. They would apologize, hurt you, and apologize. You've been conditioned to the cycle of hurt, apologize, repeat. Hurt, apolo apologize, hurt, repeat. Apologize, hurt, repeat. Apologize, hurt, repeat. Apologize, hurt, repeat. And once they see that you're still going to take that, now they take off the apology. They can now go to the next level. Hurt, repeat. Hurt, repeat. Hurt, repeat. Hurt, repeat. And now they keep going to, they add something else. Hurt, repeat, blame you. Hurt, repeat, shift the blame. Hurt, repeat, shift the blame. Now they add something else. Hurt, I mean, hurt you again in some way, betray you in some way again, do the same thing again. Hurt, repeat, repeat the hurt, shift the blame, deny it happened. Hurt you, shift the blame, hurt you, repeat, shift the blame, deny it happened. And so they, they condition you this way over time. And that's why they're, re because now they realize we no longer have to apologize. We no longer have to try to appease. You've been conditioned to the next thing. And now that's why they add the I don't care and walking out of the house and doing whatever. Because you have shown them that you're going to stay there no matter what. What else can they possibly do? They cheated on you. You stayed, right? That's how they be. They gave you a sexually transmitted disease. You stayed. They hit you. You stayed. You found out they, that they were having an inappropriate conversation with somebody. You stayed. You messed up the finances, you stayed. They're not paying their bills, you stayed. They stopped paying your bills, just taking care of their money, their bills, you stayed. You've allowed another man, you've, uh, they allowed another man or woman to, to do whatever. They left the house to go to be with somebody else and you cry and you stayed. So they know that I can push the envelope. Parents. They will recognize, talking about parents now, parents will recognize that child that they can do certain things to, the child that loves them dearly, but there's just something they may not like about the child. Sometimes parents pick on a child, especially, let's say mom got divorced or dad got divorced, whatever, but that child looks like, let's say, let's talk about moms first. The mother may look at that child, the child looks exactly like their father. And so they will mistreat the child, mistreat her son because he looks, ex he's a spitting image of his dad in every way. And she is so shot in the mind that she cannot get beyond that. Her own hurt and pain and selfishness, she's so messed up that she begins to, 
offload on this child and mistreat him because he looks exactly like his father. He makes him feel ashamed to have his face. She may do that to the daughter. The daughter looks like the father. She may look at the daughter and the daughter just has a, a smile the way she does things like the father. And she hates the child for that. You know, often people say the wicked stepmother. No, sometimes your own mother can be wicked. Wicked stepfather? No, sometimes your own father is wicked. It can be worse. Your own father, your own mother can be worse than what a, a, a step parent would have treated you better. A stranger would have treated you better. Other siblings, sometimes if you guys were all in a place, you all experienced hurt and pain, sometimes that sibling to compensate what they do, they learn to play play neutral. Sometimes they learn to to um whatever to appease the that parent to get favor. And sometimes they just they they process the hurt and the pain differently from you did. And they're filled with hurt and pain and then they just in their minds they they have they make a lot of promises to themselves. When I get out of here, I'm never gonna be this. No one's ever gonna do that to me. No one's ever gonna do this to me. But then those resolutions, while it's right, when it's just when it's fueled by her and pain, they sometimes don't allow God in because the first thing that will happen is people will allow, they will begin to blame God. Especially if the parents say that they're Christians, they will, they will lose faith in God because of what their parents have done to them. So they grow bitter and resentful and now you find that sibling who is being horrible to you throughout as an, you know, that's mistreating you. And then what you're going to do, you're going to sympathize with them because, well, I know what we went through. No, that's not the way to look at it. You're not supposed to subject yourself to that abuse because you repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. So, guys, what I want to tell you is don't believe the narrative. And it's going to take time. This video alone or what I'm saying to you is not going to be the only thing. It's going to be prayer, seeking God, even getting counsel. There's nothing wrong with getting counsel, guys. And not going and getting counsel. You can go to your church, but I personally think you should not. Sometimes you need someone who is neutral. That's not maybe a part of your church that know you guys and know your mom and know your dad. You need people that's not going to just automatically default to all. You need to no, go to a, if you, you're going to Christian counseling, which is fine, you go and you go to a place where they will give you Christian counseling. That's it. But the biggest thing is, guys, is going to God. And you can also go and get uh, regular counseling at a counseling, you just, you know, at a, a clinic. Uh, uh, they have self-help and they even have, they have a lot of things online these days. But you can go see a counselor and sit and talk to them about the things that you experienced. That is fine. And guys, pray and ask God to help you. Take out, take out any hurt and pain because it's going to be a process, guys. It's going to be a process. But what I want to talk with you about is understanding that your mom, dad, the person that you're with, whatever they want to tell you, don't let them be able to put that last nail in you and through you and you believe it and you carry it throughout your life and you're unable to move on. You're unable to receive love. You're unable to have genuine friendships and relationships because this person was doing it way before you. They've been doing this for a long time. You are not their first and you probably will not be their last. So therefore, if you think of the ups and downs and ins and outs and highs and lows and the lies and the truth and the truth and the part of the truth, the, lie, the amount of lies that you've caught this person in and the way that they have behaved and their character, why would you allow that person's last words to you or whatever they're saying to you to be the truth? It's not. You can't trust the words of a liar, a person who misbehaves, a person who has poor behavior, lack reasoning, unable to look at themselves. They can't tell you anything about you if they can't even face themselves. Because the reason why they won't admit is because they know the type of person that they are. And you know how I know that they're that type of person? I can tell you the reason why they are that type of person, they know who they are, guys. The reason why I can tell you they know who they are is because they deny what they do. 
They'll do it and deny it because they know it's not right what they did. So they deny it. Another way you know that they know that they, they are aware that they're not a good person and their behavior is wrong is because no one else will see what they're doing. They do not behave that way around other people. And the way you know that they know how to behave themselves is because they are a nasty person, but when they're at work, they know how to carry themselves with those who have authority over them, those who are important to them. They can curb that behavior. They can be great when they're at the church. You see how they are. They're kind and patient and lift other people's children up and talk to other people nicely after they have cussed you out and they've done certain things where everybody's going you have such a great husband and great wife. You're, you oh, you have such a, a wonderful parent. You have such a wonderful child because sometimes your own kids can be doing stuff too. <laughs> and I've done a video about that. But they'll tell you those things, and that's how you know they know how they they are aware of themselves and they know how to behave. But you know what? They reach a place in their life, they feel like I don't have to do that with you. You're just my child. You're just my sister. You're just my brother. You're just you, you're just a friend I've known all my life. Come on, we talked about that jealous friend. Your achievements cannot be voiced. You can't enjoy that. You have a celebration to 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 celebrate your achievement and everything and they will show up and will be a cold be show up by, be the wet blanket the whole night. You will feel uncomfortable being praised and being being given accolades for your achievement because this friend is mad at you for that. You take them and go on a vacation together and everything is fine, but suddenly they just turn, they get cold, they're not talking to you. But you don't realize they're mad at you because you you got up before them and just went downstairs to, to for breakfast. You were thinking of them not to wake them, but now they're mad at you for that. Now they're mad at you for that because somebody is giving you more attention. They're, they're mad at you because it seemed as if everybody was talking more to you than to them. You, you, you can't have this type of person. So what do you learn to do? What you would do is, oh, well, let me wake them up and, and you want to wait for them. You, you're fully dressed. They want to sleep in. You're fully dressed. You're ready to go. But now, because you don't want to make them mad, you're going to sit there and wait for them to slowly get themselves dressed and take forever and, and use the phone and look at this. And you're sitting there like a child because you don't want to upset this friend. And you go downstairs and they're still cold and whatever. And now you're trying to decide what you want to do, but you're going to do what they want to do because you don't want to make them mad. So, and you don't want to be too happy. And if everybody's in a group talking, you're suddenly aware of how they look, their facial cues, their micro expressions. You've been, you have been, you have been trained to know, let me not talk so much. And you want to turn it to them. Oh, well, he's done this before. And tell him, tell him, Mike, tell him how you did this. And oh, she's done this. You want to turn to them because you want them to get an equal amount of, 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 of attention and talk time because you don't want to upset them. That is not a friend. And that is not a way to live. But I have another video about that. It's called Toxic Friend, The Toxic Friend. And if you go to my playlist and you scroll down, you'll see it. I did a video on that. So I won't go too far there. But remember this, they've been doing this way before you, way before you were born, when it's your parents. Many years later, they've chosen to do this. Some, the person you've been dating, trust me, they've got some mauled, mangled, individuals in their past that they have hurt and they'll continue to do long after you unless they change in heart your job is to police yourself recognize the situation that you're in get the counsel that you need be prayerful ask the lord to help you and to lead you and to guide you because those type of relationships are hard to get out of because truly sometimes you're trauma bonded and you've been conditioned. And what you don't want to be is that you leave. When you do leave, you don't carry that bitterness and that hate with you and that type of stuff. Because what you will find yourself doing, even though you've distanced yourself, you yourself have carried all that baggage and all those seeds with you. And then just by nature, because you've been in such 
tumultuous environments, even when, when you're around people and it, you're around individuals that really care about you, now you're with your children, you will recreate that same environment, except you are now the one that uh, that's terrorizing other people and hurting other people and putting other people on edge. You do that thing in a new relationship. You do that thing with your children. You create that environment where now your children are on edge because of you. Because even though you distance yourself, now you have created your own little empire of terror and you don't want to do that. So it's important that you get that healing from within. And that comes from God first and foremost. And that comes from counsel and just making determined steps, self recognizing realizing what's in you, being able to see those behaviors and being determined and deliberate in not repeating those steps or those actions. All right, guys.